Hello, happy holidays, and welcome to the fastest half hour in the cryptid world. This Week in Bigfoot, the news show that scours the internet and the Bigfoot community each and every week to bring you the people, the places, and the stories making headlines around the Bigfoot world. Then we take it and we wrap it up in a nice, neat 30-minute package. If that's a new Sasquatch, Bigfoot of the Wild Man, trust me, we've got you covered. This week, we look into a Bigfoot sighting in upstate New York and share the details of that recent eyewitness account. Mike Lucci investigates how camouflage really works in tricking the human mind. Snowwalker Prime's had it up to here with those so-called Bigfoot experts in a brand new two minutes with. And Ben Radford, the author of Bigfoot Believers, can't seem to get enough of, this brings us up to speed on Melbourne is it all and his upcoming article. These stories and more than enough Bigfoot news to sober you up just in time for you to hit your Christmas party. So you better buckle up, settle in, and grab a big old glass of eggnog and try to keep up because things move fast around here. You ready? Because we ain't getting any younger. Let's go. If you follow the show, then you probably know by now that we are constantly on the lookout for any and all Bigfoot news, especially Bigfoot sighting reports, to bring to your attention. Unfortunately, these sighting reports sometimes come few and far between in the real world of Bigfoot news. A few weeks ago, we featured Brandy Butcher, a woman who claimed to have seen a Bigfoot in the Ozark Mountains last summer during the Ozark Mountain Bigfoot Conference. Recently, not far from where I call home here in upstate New York, a deer hunter claims she spotted a large bipedal creature she believed to be Bigfoot. We're going to share that story with you now. The sighting occurred back in November on state land, most likely neither Penn Mountain, Clark Hill, or Buck Hill State Forest, in the community of Steuben in Oneida County, New York. The sighting was posted to the Bigfoot researchers of the Hudson Valley Facebook page back on December 3rd. The hunter, who posted the sighting anonymously, explained that the incident began shortly after her and her friend had settled in to hunt late on the morning of the 22nd of November. The incident began with what the two hunters think were loud wood knocks followed by guttural whoops and grunts being called around the area. These calls, according to the report, were then followed by what she says was a large tree falling down and perhaps being pushed over. The creature then apparently began to stomp or walk closer to them. She quickly ruled out deer and other hunters as the stomping was too heavy and too loud. A bear, perhaps, she thought to herself. The unsettling sounds forced the two hunters to quickly abandon their position, and as they got to their feet, the hunters spotted a tall, dark, black figure shaped like a pillar, her words, not mine, a short 50 yards away in broad daylight, as it was now, right around 12 o'clock. Now, if I read the report correctly and I read into the report correctly, I'll put the link to it in the description, it's really not all that detailed, the witness is pretty sure that the dark red hair color she kept seeing on what looked like the creature's head was most likely the creature's face, and she saw it every once in a while as the creature moved around. Unable or unwilling to move any closer in order to get a better look, I don't know about you, I probably would have walked towards it, but I wasn't there, she eventually tried to grab her binoculars out of her backpack to get a better look. Looking away momentarily to get her stuff out of her bag, just like that, the creature was gone. Don't know what happened to it. After the two confused hunters kind of gathered their thoughts, they continued to hear wood knocks and whooping and calling back and forth for quite some time, but from two different directions. They eventually decided to go hunt in a different location. Can't say I blame them, the deer were probably already gone. Now, while the Adirondacks are well known for Bigfoot activity and sightings all through the area, most come from Warren County, and that's in the other side of the park, on the eastern side. This far west isn't exactly the spot for high Bigfoot traffic. Only one reported sighting currently to BFRO comes from Oneida County. Now, if anybody has any more information on the sighting, we'd love to hear about it. We'd like to get you more details, but we want to make sure we get you the correct ones. You can do so by hitting us up in the comments section or drop us a line at This Week at Bigfoot Newscast at gmail.com. For the longest time, scientists believe intelligence was primarily tied to brain size. Now, while it's still an important factor, there's considerable evidence that how the brain is wired could play an equal or more important role in this puzzle. And these findings could shed a lot of light on the potential scope of Bigfoot's intellectual capabilities. 
Naledi is a fantastic new species, uh, part of our family tree. Where it fits. One BBC piece that laid out this case pointed to members of our homo genus, Florensiensis and Naledi, as examples. They showed evidence of performing complex tasks like crafting stone tools, even making fires and burying their dead. Although these claims are disputable, what's significant here is that both species had smaller brains than Homo sapiens. It started a few studies on different elements of the brain's wiring network. One recent study, for example, noted how human brains do have close similarities with other primates like chimpanzees, but some of their biggest distinctions involve functions tied to cognition and intelligence. It showed that despite human and chimpanzee brains sharing many patterns of connectivity, human ones had stronger wiring between regions involving language. Part of a 2022 study examined specific parts of the prefrontal cortexes in humans, chimpanzees, and monkeys, during which scientists identified only one cell type unique to humans, a type of microbial cell, which performs functions like regulating brain development, maintaining neuron networks, and injury repair. The study found this particular microbial cell activated a unique set of genes in humans, suggesting a potential link to cognitive abilities. The article also examines unique patches of the human genome associated with the brain. Many genes in these specific patches influence cell types tied to brain expansion. A recent study expressed one of these genes called SRGAP2C, which is specific to the homo genus, they injected it in mice. Uh, the study found an alter their connectome and created additional links in the cortex, suggesting a role it plays in shaping neural connectivity. The article gets into a lot more detail, but I thought these were some of the more notable aspects and studies to cover in this group window. Nonetheless, what we covered can help us set up some parameters for speculating Squatch's intellect and cognitive capabilities. While size is an important factor, we covered why the strength and functionality of a brain's wiring connectivity could be the main driving factors. Squatches are said to be highly intelligent and cognitive creatures, which many researchers believe has helped them stay hidden for so long. And perhaps, if we start asking more questions about Bigfoot smarts, what we find could potentially give us some important pieces to solving this enigmatic puzzle. I recently sat down with everyone's favorite skeptical author, Benjamin Radford, to check on the status of Melba Ketchum and Steve Isidall's DNA project, as well as his latest article that's coming out after the first of the year for Skeptical Inquirer. Glad you're here. It's so good to have you back uh, on This Week in Bigfoot. It's been a while. We are now closing in on episode 40, believe it or not. We've 40 weeks in, and we haven't run out of enough fodder and news to, to talk about. Uh, that being said, I did read your article. I want to get to that in a second. Yesterday, day before, I took a couple days, took a few days to finally get uh, Melba, Dr. Melba Ketchum and I speaking with each other. I don't even know where to begin. Very, very informative. Uh, one thing I was looking into doing, I thought I could do, I'm not familiar with, was a donation to view. This video is over three hours long and loaded with so much knowledge and information. When it comes to this topic, it's gonna blow your frickin' socks off. Um, I want to is talk now. Steve is it all? Everybody's favorite uh, Ann Landers of Bigfoot um, from no. the, from the Great White North I has just doubled down and promised that Melba has groundbreaking news to uh, to to break to the public, the but only through a pay per view uh, on Steve's Steve channel. Melba. Well, your thoughts? You know, and this is one of the problems, and we'll we'll talk about this later. Is that is that is that Bigfoot is just littered, but with these big promises that fizzle out and, and die on the vine. And at some point you have to think, you know, it's the old, the old phrase, you know, fool me once, shame on you, fool me twice, shame on me. At what point are people <laughs> just going to say, you know what, I I'm not buying it. Now, at the same time, look, if Melba wants to, I don't want to use the word scam because I don't know what it is. But if, P if Melba wants to take money from people um, on the premise that they will be getting actual uh, Bigfoot, uh, you know, information or DNA. Yeah. Then, yeah, then, yeah, then, you know, I mean, Hey, it's your money. You do what you want with it. Uh, but at some point you're like, come on, man. I mean, <laughs> it could be going to 
to much more legitimate uh, enterprises, ones that are actually science-based, ones that aren't led by somebody who actually uh, was uh, disciplined for, for misconduct, whatever. Yeah, I mean, your your analogy to P.T. Barnum and Carnival Barkers is dead on, right? You, you have these people and they're selling the sizzle, right? They're, they're selling, right. you know, oh my God, you know, step right up, you'll see this, you'll see that. And, and again, if, if all you're wanting is entertainment, right? Look, when, when I go to, to carnivals and, and sideshows, which I love, <laughs> I, I, I love that stuff. That's, that's right up my alley. You know, I know I'm not actually going to see a half woman, half fish. <laughs> I know so that I'm, I'm, I know I'm, I'm more skeptical than the average person, but yeah. I know that I'm not actually going to see a guy turn into a gorilla right in front of me. I right. know it's an illusion and that's fine. I'm paying my five bucks or whatever it is these days. That's all well and good. I'm there for the entertainment. But this is different, right? Because the the claim is that they're they're going to offer ostensibly valid scientific evidence regarding Bigfoot. Right. Well, okay, that's 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 different. That's not just hey, we're going to entertain you. We're going to do something fun. It's like we're you know, if you give us money, we will let you see this evidence. And as I said, you know, to start out, that's not how science works, right? There's peer review. There's other people that are looking at. It. There's people. There's validations, and especially in, in Ketchum's case, right? Her her history is so checkered is is jaded at best. So yeah, we we got yeah. that right, and that's and that's it's it's and it's as hard as it is for some people to understand that because we're talking about Steve Isidall has a subscription base of almost three hundred thousand people, right? And 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 then certain people pay twenty four dollars a month to, for this and nine ninety. So it's hard for those people that are so emotionally attached to right. that individual and everything he does to hear the truth, and it's it's. It's, it's sad on a certain front because these people are so emotionally involved with this, right? But it is not the way to run things, correct? Right? It's not how science works. Yeah. And, and you know, it reminds me of a, of a quote attributed to or from uh, Mark Twain, which is that it's much easier to uh, fool people than to convince them they've been fooled. Um, <laughs> and it's, it, it's a, I mean, that's that's the story of my, my life, right? It's like, you know, there's some video thing. And I'm like, this is, this is, this is what this really is. People are like, no, 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 they just double down. And at some point, like, look, I don't, I don't care. Right? I'm going to sleep fine tonight, whether you believe this stuff or right. not. Okay. I'm trying to help you out. And this is, this is the position I've been in, in regarding Bigfoot and cryptozoology in general for going on two decades, right? I, I'm occasionally treated as like the mean skeptic, the guy who's trying to debunk and disprove. I'm like, no, my, I'm trying to help you do better research. Uh, and that's the point and, that I make in, in the article. And they take it, and the article is actually excellently well wrote. And it's it's amazing. And if and you guys don't know, it comes out, I believe it comes out after the 1st of January. Uh, yeah, any, any day now, probably in the next, either around Christmas, give or take. Back in the last quarter of a century, when we've gotten far better, you know, forensic techniques, investigation techniques, and cell phones and communication, this and that, where are we? And that's important. That, that is important to note uh, is, is if you look at technology back when you wrote the first article, and now you look at technology today, it is literally like the, it's going from like 1940 to 2000. It's like we have jumped so far ahead so yeah. fast. So it was a perfect time for you to say, okay, let's reset the table. Let's see what we got. Yeah, absolutely, and and that's one thing, uh, and you know that you just you just touched on, which is that you know I mean the the average person in their in their pocket has has technology, uh, video technology that would be the envy of Hollywood, you know, 10, 15 years ago. They would love <laughs> to have the stabilization, the resolution. They, you know, we're talking the multi billion dollar industry that that couldn't do a lot of things that, that we can do today without without a second thought. Right. Exactly. So anyway, so that, yeah, but that's, I think that's an important, that's, an, I'm glad you, you emphasize that because that's often missed, um, is, you know, is, you know, there by any straight, by, you know, by any, what was it, any, basically by, by any account, the evidence for Bigfoot, if the, the Bigfoot are out there, um, it should be getting better and better, right? There's, it should be, it should be. It, what 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 was taken in 1968? And again, I I am I'm sit on the fence. I go no way. But but if you look <laughs> at if you're being fair and honest with yourself, you have to say that the quality of the evidence has got to it has to be spectacular by now. If indeed people are actually filming what they claim to be filming. Tonight's episode is sponsored by Larynx. All right, check out this trail camera photo. 
we see a part of a moose at first, but unless you've already seen this image before, you might not notice what's lurking in the background. Do you see it? If not, don't worry. Most people probably wouldn't be able to spot the cougar on their own. It blended into the background astonishingly well, and goes to show there's no pertinence to size or placement on the food chain for utilizing camouflage. Here's another example. There's an elephant somewhere in this picture. Uh, did you find it? Having clarified that camouflage can be used very effectively by both large and predatory animals using these examples, it makes all the more sense that something like a squatch could utilize this capability, which in turn could explain why it's been able to remain hidden so well over these years. Squatches reportedly appear in natural colors, shades of brown, black, auburn, gray, and these colors blend in so well with the forested mountainous and swampy terrain where um, they're usually encountered. Especially if they spent generations mastering this illusionary craft, Squatches may have camouflage down to a science, and for us to understand why it would be such an effective tool for them, we need to know exactly how it's perceived by our brains. Our perception of objects and shapes is determined by how our brains organize the sensory information it receives. It's first important to explain the order in which our eyes notice details. Although there are multiple factors and variables affecting this, the human eye generally notices movement first, followed by color, shape, and size. The brain is wired to perceive shapes and figures that contrast with its background. It's an evolutionary adaptation that's especially prevalent in social pack hunters like Homo sapiens. Moreover, our brains are wired to perceive visually similar elements as a single unified group, which tend to be perceived as a whole when positioned in a continuous line, essentially creating a sort of blending in effect. Our brains tend to automatically fill in gaps of known objects when presented as incomplete or partially obscured or hidden. It fills any of these visual voids by basing them on various mechanisms like previous recollections, um, basically using what it expects to see. This is a more extreme example, but I'm sure your eyes are immediately drawn to that blue Bigfoot, which contrasts sharply with its surroundings. And again, unless you've already seen this picture, you were probably totally oblivious to the cougar blending in with those rocks. It's uh, pretty crazy how that happens, huh? Anyway, in Bigfoot's case, despite their alleged towering heights, we demonstrated how it would essentially be a non-factor in utilizing camouflage. If Bigfoot is a real flesh and blood animal, camouflage has to play a pivotal role in its ability to remain undiscovered. And um, if that's the case, these creatures could very well have an unrivaled mastery of this skill that may even exceed our scientific understanding. And the only way to ever have a chance of cracking it is by learning how it's interpreted by our minds. All right, folks, it's about that time. We are officially halfway through episode 39, which could only mean one thing. It's the part of the show that we give to content creator Michael Merchant to speak his mind and get what's ever bothering him off his chest. Yup, you got it. Here he is again. This is Two Minutes With. from the Bigfoot experts. Did you say Bigfoot and expert in the same sentence? Yes, I did. These people are amazing. The knowledge, the depth, and width of their knowledge is incredible. About Bigfoot, where did they get this knowledge? Interacting with the great beast, habituation. Like Diane Fossey? Yes! Yes, you know about this habituation. You live with the Sasquatch long enough, and then suddenly they, they act like you're not even in the environment. I, I don't think I've seen this evidence. There's some forest communicators that say that Sasquatch leaves glyphs in the forest to communicate. Glyphs, like the Viking writing? Yes, exactly like that. She lives with a broken mind. Like, for example, this could be a glyph. That's a brush pile. That's literally a brush pile or a very sophisticated glyph. <laughs> no, it's not a glyph. It's a, it's a brush pile. It's a pile of dead sticks. Well, that's not the only example. This too could be a glyph. A crack pile of styrene. 
things. Those are sticks in the road. You say potato, I say potato. No, those are just sticks laying in the road. That's, that's nothing. Are you a Bigfoot expert? I'm just asking. I have never professed to be a Bigfoot expert. I don't think there, I don't even think there is such a thing. Oh, there's such a thing. And I have been in communication with these Bigfoot experts and they tell me that that's a glyph. I see a glyph right here. This is a glyph. Look at this. This is amazing. It's incredible what the Sasquatch are leaving for me. How, how can you argue against this? There are literally sticks all over the place in the forest. They come off from trees. Trees are made of sticks. Is it a coincidence that Bigfoot lives in the forest too? I think not. I, I don't even know what that means. Again, I bring you pristine evidence from Bigfoot experts. What you talking about, Willis? PhD MITs in the field of Bigfoot. There isn't any such a thing as an MIT PhD Sasquatch person. Hello, YouTube fans. It's Dr. Matthew Johnson. Have you not heard of Dr. Jeff Malbrum? I don't think he went to MIT, but he does have a PhD and he is an expert at Sasquatch. By the unholy panda bears. OMG. What you talking about, Willie? I'm just saying, he's a professor, accredited professor, a learned man. All right, all right I'll give you this. He, he is a bit of a Bigfoot expert. Aha, aha, aha. I knew it. I knew eventually you'd see my side of the fence, my side of the story. No, I, I, I don't think we're there yet. I'm telling you, these glyphs, I, I, since people have told me about them, they're all over the place. I'm seeing them everywhere. You are in the middle of a forest. There is literally sticks everywhere on the ground here. I'm glad you agree with me that there are glyphs. No, I'm not agreeing. I'm saying that I, you're saying they're glyphs. I'm saying they're just sticks. They're sticks that are falling down that Bigfoot is leaving behind as a sign to me. Sticks that are falling onto the ground. You know, I think we're almost in complete agreement except how do the sticks get there? <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, yeah, if you put it that way. So we're this close to agreeing. I, I don't know if we're that close. I'm sorry, Gary. There's no longer a place for you here. What you talking about, Miss Nagel? Wild Bigfoot by Larix. The official hat of This Week in Bigfoot. Sponsored by Larix. It's time once again for the Bigfoot Rundown. Check out this video coming out of Laos. I hesitated to include this one at first, but um, that was before I learned some telling details about it that I think made it worth mentioning. It was first published on a YouTube channel called Non Guitar USA before eventually reaching TikTok where some TikTok users claim the background voices you hear were saying things like, look, look, do you see? And more notably, it's moving or it looks like a person. This means multiple people apparently spotted the so-called figure and it, doesn't matter what they say, it appeared to have uh, human living qualities. I couldn't find anything about when or where in Laos this was allegedly filmed, but this part of the world is no stranger to hosting Bigfoot-like creatures. Laos has its own stories that are joined by Vietnam's rock apes, uh, China's Yaren, and Sumatra's Ring Pendek. So what do you think this video shows? Bigfoot, human, giant, something else? Um, drop us a line, let us know what you think. How to hunt Steve Vizalal is doubling down and sticking by Dr. Melba Ketchum, claiming that good, honest work is being done and the truth will be revealed soon in regards to her latest attempt at sequencing Bigfoot and other cryptid DNA. And Steve is exploring ways to do some sort of donate-to-view, otherwise known as a pay-per-view, 
of their latest conversation in order to raise funds for the Cryptid Genome Project. Take a look. She calls me one day, I'm at work, and she's hysterical. I mean, she is screaming and crying and says there's a monster out here. And now I had no clue what was going on. So I come to the house in a hurry. I find her, she's in the bedroom with her two little girls huddled up in a corner, hysterical. I mean, I'm talking totally hysterical. And it was, I said, what's going on? And she says, there was this thing that ran across the front yard. She said, it looked like a giant hairy man. Now, in order to be completely fair and transparent, I did reach out to Melba via email. I haven't heard back yet to see if she would come on the show to tell us about the progress her project is making. If and when she does, I will let you know, and we will pass that information about the project's progress along to you for free. This is a picture of the Vangunu giant rat. It was photographed by scientists for the first time ever in the Solomon Islands, an archipelago northeast of Australia. These extremely rare rodents can grow up to 1.5 meters long and are capable of chewing through coconut shells. Despite being known about for around 80 years, Ringunu giant rats have eluded documentation by scientists until the first physical specimen was obtained in 2017. It took researchers six more years to finally get one on camera. Scientists say this documentation comes at a critical juncture as the Ringunu giant rats face the risk of going extinct due to commercial logging in their habitat. Just goes to show that even in this day and age, we're still getting our first shots of some animals. And if there are 1.5 meter long rodents out there who avoid documentation for this long, why not something that's allegedly bigger, much rarer, and smarter that presides in vaster, more remote habitat, i.e. a Sasquatch? This one comes to us courtesy of Leslie Tischendorf Young's Facebook page and the Bigfoot Believers Facebook group. Leslie and her daughter were at a nearby park last week by her house when she spotted someone or something watching her and her daughter through a clump of trees. Now, Leslie was concerned, immediately pulled out her smartphone and started filming. Take a look. Right there. Ooh. Look where my thumb's pointing. Oh, yeah. See him? This looks like it. It's a human. He's just standing there watching. Now, what I liked most about this clip was Leslie and her daughter's reactions and comments. They were completely appropriate for someone witnessing something they really don't think is normal and should be there. And we're a little bit concerned. What do you think? As always, drop it to us in the comments. This map was recently posted in the Coalition for Critical Thinking and Bigfoot Research Facebook group. It's from a site called Vivid Maps and shows your distance from the nearest road in the lower 48 states along with Alaska and Hawaii. The distance ranges are classified into nine sections that span from 1 to 70 miles. The Facebook user who posted it said this map, quote, makes the improbability of a large primate being undiscovered even more remote. And for those who got thrown off by the triple negatives, they're essentially saying what this map shows makes the odds of an undiscovered primate living in North America less likely. While some people who commented agreed, others thought otherwise, questioning the map's accuracy and other variables like what types of roads it considered. So with that said, what do you make of this map? Does it help or hurt the likeliness of Bigfoot's existence? Uh, we'd love to hear your thoughts. The final one today comes to us from TikTok profile Spooky Lens, and seeing that he did such a great job in breaking it down, I'll just let you watch it. Over there, look, 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 over there. You see that? What the hell? The following footage was recorded by a camera found in the woods in Emerson County, Georgia. The camera was turned into local authorities in 1997, and it has captured a translucent creature roaming in the forest. Wait, 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 wait. I don't like this. You see that? Right there. Look, 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 look. Oh my god. Seconds later, a second creature appears, noticing the two hikers letting out a terrifying shriek. Scared for their lives, the two hikers start running until the one with the camera falls to the ground and the recording unexpectedly stops. The most terrifying part is that nobody knows who the camera belongs to and nobody ever tried to claim it. So what these scary creatures are, 
and most importantly, what happened to the hikers. Now, this isn't the first time people have claimed to see strange translucent creatures in the forest. Now, I'm not exactly 100% positive about the backstory on that one with the found camera or phone, but whatever. Remember this one from the missing 411 The Hunted? All of a sudden, I thought I had like a moat in my eye. I even took my finger and wiped my eye like when you get that fogginess over your eye, like it's just... I look and I'm thinking, what is this thing in the trees? It looked like a large piece of saran wrap. It's the only way I can describe it. But this thing was very white. So I'm up 14 foot and it hung quite a ways down. And I'm thinking, what is this thing? It didn't really scare me at that time until it moved and formed the arm that reached over to the other tree. It reached over about 12 to 14 foot and then it all, like a blob, like sucked into it and it went to the whole other tree. I had this very euphoric feeling like something ain't right here. Like it or not, there have been dozens of reports like these and if you know me, you know that I lean a little bit towards something more unusual in the woods than just a monkey man running around. Otherwise, I strongly feel we would have cataloged it by now. And that's this week's Bigfoot Rundown. It's time once again for Chuck Larson and this week's top five Bigfoot podcasts and live streams. Okay, here we go. It's Chuck Larson again with my top five podcasts and live streams for the week of December 11th, 2023. At number five is the Talk About Strange podcast. Episode, She Gave Birth to Bigfoot's Daughter. A Bigfoot Island Assault turned into a miracle baby. With a title like that, this had to make the top five. My husband was pretty upset with me about it and started to become suspicious. So I finally had no choice but to tell him the truth. Imagine that conversation for a moment and the look on his face when I said, Um, honey, our daughter is a Sasquatch. Yeah. Well, at first he got really mad and didn't believe me at all. Then he questioned my sanity. <laughs> I can't say I blame him there. I can't say I blame him either. Then he asked how long I had been cheating on him and demanded a DNA test. I argued, what would, like, what would happen to her if it got out to the public? Finally, I brought out the old bag of torn, blood-stained clothes that I was wearing when it happened and laid them out on the floor in front of him. It was the first time I'd seen him since them since that day. He stared into this disbelief for a few minutes as it came together for him. Then he collapsed to his knees and clenched the clothes in his fists. I could see the fury coursing through his veins and then the sadness hit him as he looked up at me. Coming in at number four is Weird Encounters. Disturbing encounter in Michigan leaves him terrified. Besides the disturbing encounter, there's also a story of government involvement in the cryptid world. The head and legs looked like they belonged on a large German shepherd, but the torso was human-like. It had broad, muscular shoulders and a large hump of dense muscle on its back. I stumbled back. My foot hit a rock or stick or something. I don't know, but it made a noise and startled the creature. It stood up on its hind legs and snarled. I'm 5'10", and the creature was looking at me eye to eye. Its breath was hot and smelled horrific. I fell backwards onto my butt and scrambled away as fast as I could in that position. I threw handfuls of dirt and rocks in the creature's direction while desperately trying to get back to the fire. The creature ran into the woods while making a whooping howl. The entire party just stared at me in silence. Sliding in at number three, it's Grizzly on the Hunt. Rolling the bones and rattling the cage. Bigfoot and Sasquatch. Check it out. <laughs> And he told Captain Joe a story. And Happy said when he was 19 years old, he's got a buddy that owns about 300 acres. I think it was way more than that back then. But he had grown up with this friend, uh, grown up going out to this property. And uh, he went out there deer hunting one afternoon by himself. Well, he's walking down. There's a long, uh, it's a pipeline that runs right down the middle of this property. Well, he's walking the pipeline and he comes up to like a, it looks like a makeshift hunting blind. 
-hmm. He thinks his buddy <clears throat> set it up or somebody else did. So he goes and sits down in this thing. He says he's there for, I can't remember how long he said, for 20 minutes or whatever. And he's sitting there, and two of these things come up behind him, screaming at him in samurai chatter. Mm -hmm. And he describes it as the Ron Moorhead Sierra sounds is what he always brings up. Well, it scared him so bad he passed out. Well, when he wakes up, he's back in the front seat of his truck 300 yards away with the door open. Has no clue how he got there. Now, he won't say it, but looks to me like they picked him up and they put him in his truck. At number two, it's Paranormal Porthole. Episode 28, Season 5, Attacked by Bigfoot, Tommy Dougal from Florida. Take a listen. So when, you, when he went to grab you, he was grabbing you for your arm, but he kind of scratched your back and your chest. Yeah, his his um his his um his fingers are like you know like way long, and on the on the end of them, you you see now you know all the researchers are out there finding their claw mark like the bears. You know they do the same thing, mm -hmm. and uh, apparently you know his nails were were on my body, and they felt like razor blades. That's what. Uh, really got my attention. I knew I was in big trouble, like, yeah. right away. It was no joke. Like, I wasn't uh, imagining anything. This thing was ready to cut me apart, you know? Right. And it, it would have been really easy. Yeah. And at number one this week, it's Untold Radio AM. Terrifying Encounters with Dominic Josh Nanokio, Eyewitness Storyteller. Another great interview by Doug and Alex. Add in, like, the weird stories where, where like, good evidence like photo video um cast like, like you name it physical is like confiscated and like they're told not to talk about it and like that there's apparently this whole cover-up uh in fact coming to my mind is the whole joe barger story which if nobody's heard that long story short it's this truck driver who in the manistee national forest apparently shot and killed one of these things while it was trying to get into his truck um and then he was later accosted and arrested by unmarked government vehicles they took him to this undisclosed location they sat him down they said look you killed one of our assets and he's like what the hell are you talking about and they're like listen they're like if you don't stop talking about this they're like we can make a lot of bad things happen you know maybe you piss dirty for your ua for your truck driver job maybe you lose your house maybe your bank account seizes up you know we can make a lot of bad things happen and so it just, it just like you hear this stuff and you're like my god like what is going on out there and of course I can go on and on, but I'm just trying to keep it short. So it's like, it really like makes me think like, man, like if I didn't believe that there was something going on before, like I definitely do now, but what, well, that, that's, that's the, that's the great puzzle. We're all trying to figure out, man. None of us know. That's why we're doing this. All right, folks, it pains me once again to tell you that we are all the time for this week's episode. It sure does fly when you're having fun. Episode 39 is now in the books. I'd like to thank you for watching and remind you to like and share everything we do here at the Catskill Appalachian Research Collective. We're going to tell your friends. And if you have any questions or comments, or maybe a story you'd like to see on the show, you can always drop us a line at This Week in Bigfoot Newscast at gmail.com. Now, special note, we will be on the air next week for a special Christmas Eve edition of This Week in Bigfoot. So, ditch the family, tune in, and you'll never know what you'll see on the next edition. It'll be episode 40 of This Week in Bigfoot next Sunday. So until next week, for Mike Lucci, Chuck Larson, and Snowwalker Prime, I'm Brendan Brown reminding you that when it comes to getting your Bigfoot news, be informed, not biased. Happy holidays. We'll see you next week, Christmas Eve. Bye-bye.